All right, so let's get started on day 17. Moving right along, so yeah, take a look at the today's working dock. And let's follow up on the progress where we are both on a digital model and a build progress. So wrapping up the digital model, uh, let's just take a look at that. I'll share my screen. Take Project a look at exactly needed. where we are. On that. Okay. So can people see my screen on a free cab? Yeah. Okay. Moving right along, I noticed I that uh, uh, yeah. so somebody put in the bathroom, which is great. So, and that's that's kind of realistic. It's um, where the bathroom is. There's the wall, the utility wall, and the plumbing. And the bathroom actually goes through the wall. So we want to actually open up. Um, so we're not doing too many penetrations there. We want to open up, probably notch out this bottom here and otherwise just little details of how we make it easy because the pipes are already in there so we can't easily um, oh unmute mm-hmm yeah sorry about that so plumbing someone inserted when we look at that, it, this this is pretty good in terms of accuracy. It turns out nicely that uh, if you look at some of the details here, bath bathtub is exactly where it should be. It's basically ending up right on the wall here with the plumbing going through it. Uh, so there's some details of how we actually run this through because uh, these pipes are in there already. You notice, maybe notice like a little bit of right now what's drawn up there is some conflict so that's that has to be like special conflict right there like uh, you can't be going through that wood right now so probably like the bottom here may be notched out for the utilities and there's also the water line that comes in there so and that's behind the the sink like the sink area cabinet area there um, so that's just one observation here but it's looking great as far as like the inside wall modules connected. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, here, the plywood will go all the way to the bottom. There is a utility channel. Well, we, no, that I think that's good. That the utility channel will be there because there is some electrical in there, so we're good on that. And looking at the layers, so you got the bottom floor, I'm just trying to assess, okay, how are the layers looking? Like, is everything legit for the layers? Let's take a look at if we can understand what's going on with layers. Um, so clearly you've got the first floor. Above that you've got the top plate assembly, that's good. Okay, like here I'm noticing some stuff is sticking up, which probably shouldn't be. Like, yeah, the, you can see some of these modules, that's a little too far up, definitely. So we have to examine what's going on there. Like, what is going on there? So, for example, if we look at the bottom, um, we can see that this module here is not sitting equal with these other ones. So that, that explains why the top is a little too tall. This needs to be lowered here. Uh, and you can see the kind of, kind of details when you look from the edge, from the side. So that we can see. Uh, let's see what else can we see. Well here we got it. definitely this is too high, right? Uh, these two windows are sitting too high. 
and if you look at that <coughs> they're above well I guess that's the that area there that's the that's the bottom plate of the windows um, I think that should go down like over an inch and a half or so true because it's sticking out more than one and a half inch above those just need to be lowered so I'm hitting like one two from the top is there any inconsistency that could be the front door trim that could be fine I'm just looking that everything is more or less matching if you notice here this looks like this panel here it got rotated you see that like when you look down there it got rotated for some reason um, just a minor rotation there uh, what about this space here there's definitely a space there so some some inconsistency so what causes that space can we trace that No, we have exactly 32 feet, so you, know, you might want to start measure. Okay, this definitely has to be 48 inches. That is somewhere. Well, so so I would look at. Okay, is this on the edge or is it off the edge? Well, first it's sticking out a little beyond the edge. That edge appears to be. If you look at the top there for one it's a little off but then that wouldn't explain that whole space so probably there's some something else going on like like what um, that's looking from the back so what could we see there? That looks good there. So here in the part tree, yeah. Um, what is this about? Module 12, 11, 11, 12? That's 11. So this looks good here, for example. Let's see. I mean, that looks good. It's right next to it. Oh, that, that one is the one up in the front that's high a lot of this looks good I can't easily see a space that we need to fix somewhere but um, let's see we know we're sticking out here a little bit. I'm still kind of at a loss, like why that that much space is there. Um, yeah, just a little bit of inconsistency. Yep. 
Okay, so so those are some details. So the second story platform, if we let's see, let's turn on everything. Second floor platform. So uh, just understanding the layers. First story walls, top plate. So where's top plate? Top plate there. That's good. Bottom walls, top plate. Yes, that's good. Right on top of that is your assembly for the floor. Second story floor. On top of it is a plywood which has not been attached everywhere. It's just like that middle layer you see there. So that's, we're still waiting for that. Uh, second story walls, good. Top plate on the second story. Um, and that top plate looks good. Well, no. Is that the short side? That's the short side. Okay, so if you look at the top plate detail, is that good? Do we like this top plate like this? We talk. Remember the overlap. How does it overlap on the corners? Um, who can discuss that one? Is that one good? Yeah, long corner here. Right on the side. Yeah, that, that should be what, 47? This one is 47. Mm. Yeah, right? That's good. So we're binding that one. So top plate is good. But it's the walk. It's the walk, right? Uh, so this one looks good. Well, let's see. I think they're both overlapping the corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, I see. Not necessarily, but because that's that should be. Oh, yeah. No, that. No, that's okay. Because this one. Is the short side corner? Oh, I see. That's just the sheet overlapping. Mm-hmm. Okay, that should be good there. Yeah. So from here we need the top story platform. So we got up to the sill plate, top sill plate. Exactly on top is the roof but there's the roof riser as well so let's go back to the dock and talk about the layers and let's all take a look at editing this here so go into page two let's review this so build layers uh, we kind of went through through it in a CAD um, but let's talk about build layers and that's the foundation so edit this everybody it's editable Let's let's redraw the layers. Uh, so the layers there are foundation, sill plate, walls, top plate, second story platform, OSB, second story walls, second story top plate, roof riser, roof structure, insulation box, OSB. This is what we need to house close in uh, from the weather. Build layers two. So copy yourself, take that, control C, control V do a little diagram so just let's draw the layers foundation there's a sill plate so build layers to close in of house so we've got 12 objects I want to see 12 objects here 
that we draw them one after another. Join me. Foundation, walls, sill plate, Second story walls. Uh, there's more. Okay, can other people edit it? Can? Are you able to edit better? Not really. Top plate, second story platform. There's always be here. Second story walls. Riser of structure. Insulation box. All right. Uh, well, we got the insulation box and insulation because that we have to put in before the OSB so we close in the house so it's watertight. Um, now, the OSB is kind of water sensitive too, but it can stand a couple of rains. So, so at this point, if you have this, you actually have a watertight structure. Um, insulation must go in there. So insulation box with rigid insulation. Rigid insulation is above the, you can say it's above the insulation box. We stick it in there. Rigid insulation. Okay, so that's, um, that's all the layers. Uh, and we've got a watertight house. Now we can start working on the interior. As we do this, there, the posts for the carport can be put in and we can start uh, here. But What's happening here is at this point, there's a few bands missing from the side of the house. The band like here and there were kind of bare because we didn't have any exterior plywood there yet. So that's still bare. So we're gonna have to fill that in. Um, so so that's that. These have to be cut to a specific size that we will probably like after we're all said and done we probably don't want to cut these before we actually get this whole structure up because we'll find okay we got exactly this kind of uh, width might be some you know however however we end up 
due to like all the sill gaskets and everything else we'll, we'll just measure that in place so we can say um, some more details here measure let's say measure band width in place we can point to point to these two things here for the the bands exterior plywood band mm -hmm. do that one and this one down here So let's discuss. So this this is uh, what we're working on right now still. And when we go up to the to the site, well, we're already up, so we can check off as we already have this in green here. It's already on the site. That's good. To get to close in, which means we can start working on the inside. We got to do all these layers. So these are things we bring up to the site. So walls, we're working on first and second story walls right now. For the second story platform, it's the all the joists with their blocking and the sp and the spacer blocking. So that needs to be prepared. The top plate, we can cut that to size. We know that we have um, the long sides on the 16 footers exactly on the short sides of the building and then a little smaller um, you can write a note there 16 foot top plate goes on short side just like we observed up here the 16 foot goes on the short side and that's the top plate in other words, these ones here will be cut down. And yeah, this is good here. We've got them, as you see, the joint there. It's between, it's not overlapping some, somewhere between panels. So that is good there. Uh, so what do we do there? We did uh, 12, 12, and 12, which is good. And maybe we can find those pieces. Well, 12, a little under 12, because it doesn't add up to. No, sorry. Bad. What is it? If it's 32. 12, 10, 10, about, so this one is about 10, that's like 12, oh, there you go, that's the pattern, 10, 12, 10, and then, so yeah, we can put 12, uh, or let's say 10, 12, 10 pattern. And the same, same applies to the second story top plate, same, same thing there. The OSB, we want to pre-cut that here. There's a few pieces that are cut to half. And we can do that here. We, we should assume that we're exactly <clears throat> working with four and eight foot pieces. And <clears throat> because the, the joists that we put on there marked carefully every two feet spacing. So that should be exact. Uh, we can pre-cut that just to halves. 
because if we don't, I mean, somewhere, somewhere you have to end up, somewhere you have to enforce some uniformity, otherwise you'd be like cutting everyone to size, which is, which would be like really bad, it would take a lot of time. So we can assume we can do that. Um, have a picture of this, how that looks. Uh, and, um, all modules, no, that would be under build instructions here. Uh, so just thinking about, just kind of wrap your head around, okay, what's the process? We've got the walls, okay, you can kind of see that, all the walls go up. You've got the top plate, you've got the second story platform. The second story platform should button up, like once you put that up on there, you're back to exactly 16 by 32. You gotta be, because we pre-cut all those members to 16 by 32, just to, to that length, like we're actually pre-cutting the all the joists and all the rim joists and end joists, we're, we're cutting that up, so it should be, should get you to perfect. Um, as far as, uh, I'm gonna show you the, just the process so you can wrap your head around. Okay, how do we build it once we have, so we have the joists, uh, we're gonna put the plywood, the flooring plywood up there. Um, so build instructions. We actually marked the, already marked the floor, the second story platform joists. Um, let's see. Not here. What's a process where you know you're gonna uh, succeed on meeting the plywood against the joist? That's the problem statement. Like if you go off the edge, you have nothing to support the next piece of plywood on. So you have to end up in the middle of a, a joist all the time. We have only one one and a half inches of play over the entire 16 by 32. So just to kind of wrap your head around, we we have this much space, the width of a joist from the top, that you can be off through the whole 32 feet. How many sheets are there in 32 feet? It's gonna be four of the eight footers. Um, so you can kind of picture, okay, that's kind of doable. If we have, if we end up the, say we start working on one side, we can't be drifting off too much. Now the thing we can do is move, the joists are suspended only on the, the ends. Right, the middle is still flexible, so we can move the joist in and out to make sure we we en end up exactly at the middle of the plywood. That's the idea there. So that's the pattern, and I wanted to show how do we get to actually building that effectively. Not in this one, it should be in the let's see build instructions under specific module. Inner walls, electric kitchens, painting walls, foundation. It's not in there. It's in. the second story platform pr procedure um, build instructions how about fabrication joints I'm 
not seeing it, but basically we start in this picture here. Um, okay. We would want to start with, let's go to here, let's go right to here. So actually this, this row here is where I would start it. Uh, you can start any row, but this one is convenient. So you take the first row and move it all the way across. When you get to the first one here, the important point is just better end up on the middle of it. Like this edge is going to be fixed, right? So we can do nothing about that, like wherever this plywood ends up. So we have to make sure that, okay, wherever that ends up, the only thing you can do there is maybe move this piece of plywood like under this this wall here a little bit out or in to, to make sure you're the best you can on here. And then just continue going down a row. This edge here you can move in and out a little bit because it's at the middle. This will still be movable slightly. So you can possibly move it up to like an inch like if it's you know, say the wood is not straight or it's a little warped. Um, but yeah, lay them one after another and what we will have, what we have to pay attention to there on these joists, we actually mark them on the top very, very middle. So we're going against this line. Well, here we're constrained because we know we have the, the stairway. So we butt it up to the edge of the stairway. So yeah, there you go. Like, can't go wrong. Um, that's a good, therefore it makes sense to lay this row first uh, because you're you're constrained by where the stairway is so you'll know where it is and the second point is is that we've got the line marked like all these joists when we bring them up there it's a detail we want to consider all the joists that we bringing are marked at the very very center so we have a guideline like when we're laying these down the guideline allows us to say okay we're exactly at the right point and down the middle uh, and that's a good idea. But once we have this one, the workflow would be, okay, so you say you got this first row. What's the workflow there? We can start on this one here and the ones next to it and keep moving to the one side. Um, however, they're staggered, right? So here, this, these are the full ones this one is a six footer so it's not sta the edge does not sta does not line up this one here will be a four foot so that the full sheet will be staggered the joints don't line up um, that's good design I just want to stagger them and here too if this is eight feet to here um, two, four, six, eight, that's eight feet there, that's one full sheet and then a half sheet there. So that's just uh, something to remember as the workflow. Okay, just going through some of the build on the second story platform. So the OSB we just kind of went through. The second story walls, like once you have the OSB there, so that's it's a prerequisite, the OSB is, is a prerequisite there, we can't build that, build a second story until the OSB is in place because the second story lies on top of the OSB with a, also a thin strip if you look at under these walls there's also a thin strip of the OSB on top here well, what happened to that one? Oh, okay I guess that was changed um, yeah so this has been corrected here but this part here it gets covered with OSB too because you want all the walls to be at the same height. So think about, okay, the second story platform, all of it, wherever this, the walls stand on top of it, you got the layer of OSB. So that's the OSB layer. Second story walls. Just put them on. It's just like the first. It's like they should go up relatively quickly. Now how do you keep that safe at that point? Uh, we want to get um, want to get some scaffolding or either get or make it just uh, scaffolding we should probably just rent it um, this team that works on the inside we can move the wall module up to the second floor and from there put it to the edge but you got to be careful there because you know, don't push it over so it falls over 
Uh, how do we make sure that doesn't happen? There will be people on scaffolding that are would be there to to make sure it doesn't <laughs> fall over, so break it. Um, so that's um, that's working at height. That's the that's a difficult part. Like um, you know, builders would be like, and they would tell you, okay, you want to you know, but try to stick to one story housing because here now it's getting more difficult. You got to go up there. You got to carry things up to the second floor, and it's it's heavy. Um, so there's a case like if we talk about DIY building, like Katarina says that too. It's it's like keep it to one story so that um, this requires some strength. You know, you got to be a healthy person to really do this. Whereas on a single story, it's it's relatively minor, much safer because you can't fall off fall off the the first story. Um, but the idea there would be uh, people on the outside and people on the inside working together to put them in place one by one. And as soon as we've got anyone in place, we, we screw down the bottom plate so that it can't fall over. But also, the screw down, is that's not enough. I mean, you can still push it, push it. So what we'll do is we'll have braces. We'll set up braces. I think we have to screw those into the, the floor, trying to pay attention that we're not putting in too many screws because the screws, screw holes will be visible from the, the ceiling on the first floor. So um, we can definitely put braces if, like around it. So here, uh, braces, maybe like in t for example, if we're putting up these walls here, we can put braces into that that's exposed, that's easy to screw into, um, or into these sides here. But also the floor, we're going to have to poke some holes and live with a few holes. But if we actually uh, if we poke the holes through the rafters, the sorry, the joists, you won't see them. So when we put the braces on, you don't want to screw like in the middle, between, like screw it so that the holes don't show up on the under, the underside. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to support it until. When is the safe? When is the point where the walls are relatively safe from busting out? Like when can we take the braces off? top plate will bind it yeah so once you have the top plate it's relatively good um, but still not not complete yet because it's it, the box on top the roof box is what's going to hold it down more and the exterior plywood on the very outside once we bond that to the roof box that's what's really going to hold it um, while the top plate will stabilize a lot of it, yeah, it still won't be complete until you get the roof box on, which is like a cap, you know, like capping the whole structure, and that makes it very solid uh, for any kind of like sideways or in and out torsion. Yeah. Uh, yes, by all means and um, there'll be extra equipment you have on site so there's costs associated with that but yeah would, would help would we carry the wall modules across the stairs like do we have to build the stairs first i think um there's two ways one we could put on a scaffolding uh so the scaffold if you get the scaffolding up there that's one way to get the panels up so you put it lift it up onto the scaffolding um, but I think, how do we do the last time? I think we put it up on a, put the modules, we carried them up there, like a few, couple of people, maybe like two people or three people from below, you push them up and then people on top would grab those. Um, so you kind of have to get your hands on it. Uh, the top of the panels is still open. Well, let's see, the top, it's open at the top. Yeah, so you can kind of grab it. I forget how we did I got to look at the video. Um, whichever way is easiest, the stairs would would be very useful because that means you're not climbing ladders all the time. It would be quite useful to get them in. Um, is there a good temporary way to get them in? You have to put on the interior siding. I, I think we probably should do that because we need the wall that uh, the stair under the stairs wall that we put under the second story platform we need those for structure 
Uh, so that means the extra step would be we put the interior paneling on the uh, where the stairs are and maybe put in the stairs. It would be good. It would be good. Um, the only way otherwise really is from the outside through scaffolding. Um, right. Yeah. Now the other thing is we can bring the tractor out, like the easiest way if you have a machine like the tractor you can use the tractor and just lift it up into place. So we might just favor that in our case. Uh, then you don't have to do the heavy lifting. That's probably, probably our scaffolding alternative. If you don't have a tractor with a loader then yeah you need to lift it up. Uh, we did use the tractor for a bunch of work before like that where you just put in the bucket and just lift the bucket. Uh, so that's probably a way to go. Um, just moving into place. There may be one, some like on the back side there, may, may not be able to get the tractor in there through the brush, but probably we could get it like from the side. We can probably get it, but there that definitely is some little uh, features that we have to cover and maybe if we use the micro track we can cover those features so that the big tractor can actually get in there and just do it all with the tractor. But as you see there are definitely practicalities that once you once you get in these things up there, uh, they're heavy. So um, there is a good case for, for one story if you have the space and then if you can afford a little more cost because the expensive parts are foundations and roofs so if you go two story it's you definitely save. So, uh, but yeah, for ease of use, and especially for like old people, old people are not going to want to have stairs in their house. So, um, there's a huge case for the one keeping it to one story as well. Like cabins, whatever we build, they're all just one story. Okay, so walls. Um, probably in our case, we want to might just do the tra tractor and get the second story uh, built that way so we don't have to spend the time on the stairs which would be like another day uh, like if you find the weather like if it's rainy season right now it's relatively well this week at least is going to be dry but if you got a lot of rain you want to cover the structure as soon as possible okay so second story walls top plate top plate we discussed a little bit uh, and we want to once again cut that just get it all prepared here well, there's two top plates there's the roof riser and then there's the insulation box like all that just cut it to length here so that we don't have to measure and cut up there uh, at the side we're just installing at the site just one after another so it just goes really fast otherwise you just people are standing around um, Insulation box all around, that's the four inches that's got the three and a half inches two by four plus just the uh, half inch spacer, which is plywood, half inch plywood attached to it, just screwed screwed on. Rigid insulation goes in, so we've got the, the big pile of rigid insulation, but that has to be cut because once you're inside the box, you're smaller than 32 by 16. These come in four by eights. So start putting them all in, and then the ones that you put in last, they have to be cut. Like the two edges that are last, they have to be cut. And there's two layers of those, because it adds up to four inches. And then the OSB, once again, OSB pattern, like here, we can follow the same pattern. Well, not exactly, because this is the six foot, but the pattern where we probably lay this row first, stagger the second, and move from there. So as far as the staggers, we need like, I think two sheets that are cut in half, so four four by four pieces well for the this platform and the and the roof platform. All right. So with that said, uh, so that's the build layers. Um, where are people? So with respect to the CAD. Uh, so we, we laid out a bunch of tasks yesterday. Where are people on it? I see the top plate. Looks like that was done. 
the, the roof riser assembly is done as well. It's just on the one with the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roof riser. Hours. Who did the roof riser? That plate is good there. Um, Paul, how's the second story platform going there? Uh, still working on it. Okay. Odundo's blocking. How's uh, that going? Yeah, I'm still working on it. Uh, is it going all right? Not really. Uh, can't. Wasn't able to like copy the objects and move them. Um, so are you working on a bottom plane, like zero zero? Or you're at position like at height at already? Height. Um I'd suggest well, just yeah. Go mm -hmm. to the base or maybe do sketches. Sketches are quick. Or if you work on the floor then you can see where um the dimensions are easy. It's not letting you do for example what like uh can you change the coordinates or that's messing up? Because coordinates should work. Make a copy and then change the coordinates box. Um, using the file that was uploaded, or the blocking, I was trying to copy those, um, the objects in there, and that was what wasn't working. Um, are they just mo moving to random locations or you weren't able to copy them? I wasn't able to, to copy them. Yeah, I mean, maybe just start from scratch. Um, yeah. Maybe there's artifacts in the file already. Um, I think if you get stuck, like a lot of this stuff, if you keep keep the concept simple, like it, a lot of times it's just easy to start again and forget about where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and roof blocking, Prince, how's that gone? Okay. In position or not? Not in position. Uh, Up at the roof, or you just got it on the floor, floor level. Like, is it in po like positionally correct so it would be up where it's supposed to be, or? Um, I don't think that the file that I worked on is positionally correct. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Yes, it's out like that. Were you working off what Wes was working? So since he's got the roof. I did what I was uh, what I worked on yesterday. Yeah, yeah, just the second story. Okay, so yeah, we can integrate that. What will be the next step there? Like, do you um, waiting for West to do the roof or to uh, correct the roof? I received like what is. Well, for example, he had like we had two by sixes for him, so he wanted to change it first to two by twelves. So. Um. Well, I might have done the two by six one then, because I just did that one. Yeah, the blocking should be. Uh, yeah, we said like ten inches. It's up to eleven point two five inches. Yeah. So if it's not, is it not? No, it's that not is. But I think I have the the, uh, the platform that I was working on was two by six, not two by twelve. Yeah. Um, well, your like if you into just copy and paste one in or merge one document to the other, we can then move it all and into position at once. I was just saying. Okay. Yeah, the blocking uh, is the right size. Okay. That's good. So we can uh, just merge those two together. Merge it, because then all that assembly is going to get tilted by the four inches. <coughs> so put everything into maybe a file on a on the floor or wherever we're at right now. So the three people that are working on a roof, what is that? So there's the plywood on the roof. Yeah, the box, insulation box that's on the roof. 
Um, top sheathing that's on the roof. So a lot of the parts are got to get in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's in this picture there's one, two, three, four, five. Well, top four, which is the roof riser, is still that's not angled. That's what creates the angle. So everything up until the roof riser is still flat. And then these four parts, the roof structure, the insulation box. Oh yeah, and we we didn't really plus the blocking. So those five things, the OSB, the rigid insulation, insulation box, blocking and roof structure, those five items, they should all be put together into one file, then just uh, rotate it as one piece, like make a simple copy of the entire thing. So when you upload, you probably a good idea, just make a simple copy. If it's all correct, then we integrate the simple copies and then make that a simple copy again and then rotate that simple copy all up. Um, if we want to, so if we're working in this final file and we want to have it more atomic, we shouldn't make a simple copy of those five pieces. We should probably keep them separate so we can uh, kind of turn off each layer at a time, like if we do build, build instructions or whatever. So um, probably um, when we integrate those, just keep the the five pieces, rotate them by selecting all five of them. When you do the rotate function within a part tree, you can locate uh, or you can select multiple things at once, and then you can do the rotate thing on on them. Okay, what else? So um, yeah, as far as the build, um, by yesterday we have eight modules finished that are ready to be installed. So there's 31 more that are just the plain ones, as far as what we're doing in a workshop. Um, now, once we know exactly how to do it, I think um, if we really start cooking on it, it's like 30 minutes of a module to cut, cut your your weather barrier, the house wrap, uh, put on the plywood and insert the insulation. It's not, not too bad, just, just once you get the hang of it and then insert the electrical uh, where about half the panels have the electrical in there. Uh, but let's see how much we can do do of that today. When we do that, um, have there been blocks where just something is just like not right and then you have to fix it or has it been good so far? It looks like we've been ending up on the blocking correctly so that was good. You just have to square up the modules a little bit to the plywood. So far, so good. Um, but in general, like just to go through the, the quality control parts, uh, let's just take a look at those real quick. This is what we're looking for. Um, so that we don't have to take it apart if, it, if it's like not, not right. So you're looking in general for flatness. Um, Try to get it to like an eighth of an inch. Don't have it <coughs> like the <coughs> say the blocking sticking out like a quarter inch. Like I'd say eighth inch. Um, length by width dimensions plus plus a quarter inch up to plus a quarter inch. So if you got your panel, it should be four feet, and then either eight or nine feet. But the eight minus the three eighths and the nine minus the three eighths. Uh, two screws per two by four, three screws per two by six on w when you're screwing in from the end. And, and wall panels, the, the dimensions you're looking for, okay, bottom blocking correct, so like the height of it, um, like eight foot, uh, sorry, for the nine foot, uh, so once again, those are the three three pictures here. 
like before you before you build just just take a look at it make sure you've got top and bottom identified uh, which we did more or less but some may may not be uh, so the nine foot module the lower blocking we got ten and a 10.125 but we also did the 9.25 there as well um, so, I mean I just put that down there we start with 9.25 both will work it's just the plywood will end up in a slightly different place um, so when we did the 9 foot modules yeah um, so I would say check so just check for the 9.25 or the 10.125 inch. Uh, just check that. For the top blocking on 9 foot panels, uh, we have a number for that, uh, 10.375, so just check that. And then the blocking for the second story, we should always have that 8.5 inch gap between the bottom of the blocking and top of the bottom plate. Um, so just check that. Uh, eight foot, so eight foot panel. Uh, 8.5 inch spacer. And what do we say about the second story? Uh, second story, well, there's um, second story wall panel. What do we say? Just remember that three quarter inch number. So we said put the top of the second story exterior panel just like three quarter inch down so we can have that overhang. So just remember that. Um, that that should be quite uniform so that when we put uh, we talked about the bands the missing bands they gotta line up otherwise you'll see them it's like all crooked you know just kind of jagged edges so make sure that's all lined so remember the top uh, edge of eight foot exterior of eight foot panel, eight foot module, exterior plywood that is three quarter inch down from top of panel. So that's just like the main thing. So those four things, if they're good, uh, should be pretty good. Um, I mean, what else to watch out for? I mean, it's I guess it's been pretty straight, relatively straightforward. Just the flatness and when the panel is there. Uh, sometimes what we noticed was when when we laid the when we were building the frame on a table there might have been a little gap between the table and the panel so so things like for example the blocking would drop down like a quarter inch so um, if that's the case do fix that like don't have don't have like maximum allowable would be like an eighth inch sticking out uh, try to fix that I think there may be some that that have that I did correct the one we were working on that I showed as a demo was sticking out a little bit too much so I punched the blocking down a little bit or if there's missing screws like if the blocking is not attached just check for that I guess that's a check for missing screws and then the screw schedule it's kind of important like every foot screw every foot on the outside and then in the middle like every one and a half feet or even two feet for the interior like the screws on the mid ribs outside edge of exterior panel about 1.5 two feet on interior ribs yeah I think that's that's about all uh, there's um, like 
I know that some of the corner panels we might have had them not not the right orientation there's one corner missing that we still need to do module number 39 but some of the interior panel the the corner corners like I think we made a copy like three times of the same one but they're mirror images like there's two and two for both the the long side and short sides um, for the long sides there's four of them for the short sides there's four of them but they're not all four the same they're they're mirror images so we just gotta make sure that if you're working on a particular number module just kind of picture it where it is in the house and it's at, is it actually that proper corner because then we'll end up taking it to the side and we see that oops wrong mirror image and we have to redo it it's gonna be a pain so just have to catch that here make sure we've got that um, in the correct orientation and how what's the procedure for, how do you tell that I mean how are people looking at it to tell that how do you describe that like okay because the corners are mirror images both the both the short and long side how do you how do you determine it whether you got the right right mirror so you have to Look at the top where the top blocking is. Like start off with the top blocking outside facing you, and then you would look at which side the corners are to make sure. So if you're like standing, like if I'm standing in front of a panel and it's supposed to go on the bottom uh, right corner or the front right corner, the long side corner should be on this side with the top blocking up. The, so it's, like if I'm looking at it from where I'm sitting right now. You're looking at the like outside like or the inside? Module 23 and 1 on the yeah. right corner. Yeah, right let's corner. say. So if I'm looking at it, the long corner should have the short corner uh, on the right side. and then If you're looking from the outside? Right. Yeah. And then 1 should be covering it mm -hmm. from the short yeah. side. Yep. Um, then, um, in the back, that's right. mirrored. Like it's on the left side. If I'm or it's, it's the the edge that's sticking out is looking toward me. The edge that's sticking out is on the opposite side, on the back side of the house. Yeah, so you're just kind of orienting yourself. You picture it, okay, this is how it goes together. And yes, I can see it makes that corner. So you just have to kind of like logic it out. Um, you just have to picture it in your mind. Okay, is that how the corner would look? And then you say either like yes or no, it would fit. Um, just kind of yeah, 3D image. Yeah, we have to keep track of that. Um, ideally, we, we build it right in the first place, um, so we're pretty clear about it. But yeah, I can check over that, make sure like that all the corners they're the right. Just by looking at it, we, we gotta just verify that we've got the right, right one. Mm -hmm. When you have one by itself, you, it's like you have nothing to yeah. put it against, so you kind of it might be a little harder, but. Um, kind of have to think okay the one and the next one next to it how it, how it goes and you just figure it out but yeah so it's just just a little bit of thought process there that you just have to stop and think about it and how do we identify which um, so the quality control for the exterior walls which ones have make sure that make sure you you include electrical and how do you tell our little diagram on page uh, this one so three and four there any panel so first floor power outlets and second floor power outlets um, just observe where they are like for example this one here that's on module number four uh, these ones don't have it until this one which is ten it's on the right hand side if you're looking from the interior right hand side of the interior on the interior side there of module 10 which is 10 right there which will be right next to the pre-framed door um, now these are here all the interior walls but you keep going around there's nothing until we get to um, to this one that's a <clears throat> that's a 30 amp <clears throat> 30 amp receptacle uh, which is actually um, for 30 amps 
that plug outlet is actually different so we, we can actually skip that one for now the ones we care about is the 15 the 30 amp one that's that's like a bigger bigger outlet we can we can do that later uh, but yeah so this corner here that's uh, I think that's 16 has it 17 uh, then one of the windows has it just at the bottom uh, then then this one has a few things that's an adjustment module it's got outlet and a switch because there's gonna be a light that's gonna be right up in it so this one is actually like it's packed it's gonna have a an outlet just a box at the top where we do like a, a switch to that light so actually would maybe we can show that how that would look like what happens when you have a switch so you got to run a wire from the, the junction box not only to the to the outlet but then to the switch and a switch switches to the light so with a cable that we use the the 1422 since it's got two possible circuits per cable we, that one cable can actually service the outlet as a separate thing and we can do, run a separate wire in that pack to the switch to the light uh, so we can we can do those which means we put the switch at standard height um, <clears throat> probably want to Google standard height of a wall switch and you get a number between 48 and 52 so we can let's just say like 48 since that's an easy number to remember so we'll make the bottom at 48 so we'll put the bottom of the box at 48 um, in this in this panel and then keep a continue another wire from that switch to to a light and the light would probably be pretty much as, as far up um, so it'll be like a room light, so the higher the better, so, you know, like, uh, how far, just close to the top, like, maybe a foot from the top, like, what's an example, like those uh, LED lights here, they're like, you know, six inches or a foot from the top, top of the wall, it'll be a, a wall, wall outlet, you, you put in the, the box, which will be like a round light box, and then whatever fixture we decide to put on there, that's already in a panel. Uh, and those <coughs> things, it would also be quite good to do the the old work light box. Um, let's Google if that exists. Old work light box, light out, light receptacle. Do they have those? They do. So once again, you look at those tabs. I uh, showed you those tabs that appear when you put in those screws when you turn the screws those tabs grab on and how do you cut this out well that's actually simple because that's a hole saw so we have hole bits that are as large as these receptacles and you just cut that out of the panel now that's going to be on an interior panel so that's going to be there for later so for now we're still putting in just a placeholder like a box uh, out there that's um, how do we do that how do we uh, it has to be exposed so actually I, we might just put in how do we do that if it's if it's got to be exposed for electrical inspection um, I think the regular ones you s yeah you actually screw in from the back so so we'll, what we can do is put like a block on our framing uh, and screw it in like you see those screws in the back there you screw those into something that's behind it so that's that's for the way you do it regularly and that's how we do it because you don't you typically don't have these side nails on on the kind of round light boxes so it's just a little different than the regular one where you you nail it to a side to the side of a stud mm-hmm so going down long yeah this panel here that number 23 also likewise has a bunch of a uh, bunch of uh, things there's the outlet and a switch now if you notice that switch that's outside 
and it has an outside outlet. So we're actually gonna, at this point, we can cut out for an outside outlet. That's a special outlet. It's, it's one of those things that are watertight. They got a little cover on it and they actually require to be GFCI, one of those outlets that has the protection for a shock, shock hazard. Uh, so we can um, we can do that. We can cut out. I'm not sure if we have the exterior light box. We might just cut out the um, the the notch for that. Just cut out a little square for that as a placeholder. Well, actually, all we need there is because those outlets are typically surface mounted. All we would all we would need is just a hole. Uh, to let the wire through. Uh, so wherever there's a, one of those green ones, that's GFCI. So there's plenty of them in the kitchen and bathroom and in the laundry, which are which there's water around there. Um, but also the exterior ones are are required to be GFCI as well. So we can put those in as well. Uh, not a big deal because we just need a hole through from the junction box. To that, so it's something we can easily mount afterwards as well, um, because the interior panels are still going to be off until later in the game when we're ready to close everything up. Yep. Uh, on the second floor for electrical, let me get to that. Um, yeah. So this panel here for exterior panels, this one here, uh, we go all the way around until this one this one, this one, this one, and the window here. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So about half of, there's um, eight out of 24, only a quarter of them have the outlets. So it should go relatively quick. Mm -hmm. That's the basic quality con on a quality control. Um, maybe we can go just a little bit. Uh, let's solve. So, so because we're moving, let's let's talk about and get into the free cut. So maybe uh, let's start with uh, actually good example. Let's take Prince's file and let's talk about how we put that into the final so and how do you you know like since it's almost well because we got so many people working on it we have to maintain the clarity of when we built the roof roof parts did we actually all build them on the ground uh, that would be the easiest otherwise if you integrate the files and you want to rotate them all together you're gonna have to first get them to the same location so the so ideally what we would have done right now is all work on a just a zero plane idea so let's let's see where we are because then we can just <coughs> run to a bunch of a bunch of panes <coughs> trying to integrate all the files so let's make sure we're we're in the right process and that way we can integrate easily uh, so let's take a look at <coughs> say prints where we're at there. So uh, what I'll do is and we can start from any of them, but let's just take prints since we had a question. Okay, where where are we working? So let's identify first. Like how do you how do you tell where where is it? Where's your origin? We'll just look at what information we have <clears throat> by clicking on the sketches or looking at the coordinates within the information tree. So it's not the house assembly master would go. So here I would, you know, if we're working as a team, I would try to go to Prince Log. I don't know if he's kept this. Um, no. So I would go then. That's one way to find it. Like if I had a question, okay, where where is that? Uh, so let's go to CAD. Uh, so yeah, actually, I mean, the question is where where do I find this file? Um, we want it to be so we got the wall modules here and then we talked about the roof here so a lot of this 
option over here, second story platform, roof. So where are people putting up their stuff? So we, we should coordinate on that and we should throw in all our info, all the pieces of the roof, because this is getting into the roof, all the five sections of the roof, five parts at least, um, sheathing, riser, all that stuff. Um, so Prince, where did I find your file? I just Story of roof that's in this in this file. I see in that one, which was kind of like our sample file. Let's see where is that. So that's that is in the roof. Is it under here? Roof riser. Oh, there. I see. So we want to add these. Uh, yeah, I missed that. So what we want to do here, first of all, is organize it so it's easy to see. So put that in a gallery format. So if you don't know how to do that, you just take one of these files, these lines. So that's it's that's one entry of the gallery, right? So that's the syntax formatting there. So just copy one of them, and if this is uh, second story roof this one, call it that, so st second story roof, the roof riser assembly it's already in there so we can get rid of that and then we need a picture for that so second story roof mm -hmm. Here we do. Uh, yeah, well, the blocking is good. So let's look at this. Um, ideally, I'd want this all to be at the height of zero. Just XY plane. And how do we tell? We are in the XY plane. The, the sketches, at least, would be in the XY plane. See, so we've got a bunch of bunch of them. So the first things we were looking at is make sure this is at, that that side is correct. Do we correct the other side? No, that's still too far out. We gotta move that over because this is once again it has to be 5.5 from out to out. These are 5.5. No, no, not on the roof. They're gonna be 6.25 on the roof. Um, which we should document for for the roof um, in the overall design file or well, design checklist here. We're keeping track of all the design features, like house design features. So let's continue this here. Uh, this was about house wrap. Let's talk about the roof here. So we continue this um, in a sensible way. First thing there is make sure we got 6.25 inch for the column, the the end joists, 6.52 inch spacing from outside to 
outside of how do you describe it? First two end joists. And who can explain why that was? Why before we had five five point five, now we increased it for what reason? Who remembers? This is on a roof. So what's the logic for that? Ceiling, yes. Space to nail the ceiling in. On second story. Yeah. Why don't we have it on the first story? No ceiling. Right. No ceiling on first story. So we keep this distance to 5.5 inch on the first story. On the So that's just one, one feature to click. Now, okay, let's look at the... Take one of these things. Let's say this pad. So that was the original one that was drawn up. Um, let's take a look at some of its properties. Placement. So where's the placement? It's at position 0, 0, 0. That sounds good. Therefore, this one should be how far away? Uh, it's a little two feet over. Two feet, how far exactly? It'll be two feet and 1.5 inch. So 25.5 is what I expect to find a coordinate on this one for the x axis. Is that so? for some reason um, so maybe it's measuring the well, 21.5 but okay well for this one I want to see it being since it's an exact copy I want to see it 21.5 plus plus 24 so I want to see 45.5 on this one yeah it does work in that so somehow, I don't know where it was measuring from there, some some trickery there. Um, yeah, but it is at z equals zero, x and y. So we are at the origin here, that's pretty good. Um, like for example, this one appears to be at zero, zero, zero. This one appears to be at 190.5, which does make sense if it's like from the bottom left hand corner because the far corner would be 1.5 more which is the 192 that we recognize as 16 feet so good so we are working in a good place um, then if we yeah it's it's good so so then we can take the other people's files like for example the uh, what's above it so we've got above it we've got the insulation box let's say or below it, what do we got here? So we got insulation box right above it. Is that so? So Matt, like um, Matt, maybe you can do an extra. Did you? Let's see who did the insulation box. Was that Matt? Yeah, that was. Me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start integrating just to see how this fits together. Insulation box. Matt, did you get a chance to do that? Do that? Yeah. Okay. Can you take that? Uh, so download the file from Prince and share your screen and see if uh, 
you can merge merge the two so what we want okay. to coordinate here on okay so we said we've got those five layers as defined here so roof structure insulation box rigid insulation osb um not the roof riser because the roof riser doesn't get get angled but we're just grouping those all together because they're going to get angled up so we want to make sure we can keep it together so download princess file and merge yours into it can you give uh, permission to um uh, oh mm -hmm. okay I did the with the insulation box. I did the one with two by fours, and then one that was half an inch, right? Yes. Go together. Yep. And matter which one goes on top? Uh, it's actually either, but maybe um, make. It doesn't really matter, but it's uh, put put the. I would say put the bottom, make the bottom the, the plywood. Um, okay. Since okay. yeah, since it'll be sandwiched and it can't come off because we're still putting the, the OSB on top of this. So on the bottom you protect it because it's more fragile than a two by four. Yeah, so on the bottom. So you got that. Um, I just click that button first. Yeah. So so first, you want to make sure this file is uploaded. Uh, did you upload this? Yeah, it's up there. It's up. Uh, what do you wear under the roof section? Uh, it will be under the roof section. So to, to do this and make it simple and not get into trouble, let's let's turn that into a simple copy first. So the procedure would be, okay, so assuming that this is all correct, then let's see, do we have any issues as far as this being correct? Uh, any, any questions? Uh, you got, you need 16 by 32. You also want does it matter which one overlaps which? Yeah, we'd want it as structural as possible. So, for example, for the whatever's below that, you want to make sure that you're spanning, like you're bonding two pieces together that are underneath if possible just like we did with the top plates right so based on that do you think you've got that right um, if the long ones I think because now underneath it is the roof box right the, the main structure the main structure has the long pieces go all the way to the edge. The long sides go, the wood on the long sides goes all the way to the edge. So here, it would be a good idea to keep your short side go all the way to the edge. Okay. Yeah. And then this goes on the bottom, and then you have the 2x4 one on top. Should the 2x4 one on, on top go long all the way to the edge? Yeah, um, yeah. Make make them both, both like that. Oh no no. Um, I, I well. I, I was thinking 
this, this one, the short side would go all the way to the edge. This is the half inch. And then for the two by four, it would be long all the way to the edge. Or is that not the logic? Like, just I would make the like logic, it. because this one half inch, that's just a spacer. It's not super structural because it's so thin. I would consider the two by four as the as the piece that's bonding what's below it because the half inch plywood is limited in its structural content so make the make the two by fours on a short edge go all the way to the end so that you're bonding the roof box frame the big big roof box does that make sense yeah Let's that. record that oh, as a piece of design info. So make the insulation box, the rigid insulation box. So do people uh, understand the distinction between insulation and rigid insulation? Because we're talking about there's two types of insulation that goes on, on the roof. There's a layer of the fiberglass and there's a layer of rigid on top of that. So fiberglass goes in a big box, the rigid is another four inches on top for the purpose of condensation, so you can get water into the, the the soft insulation. It's just additional thermal thermal protection, which prevents water. Which you'll notice in uh, when you have a roof that's got a lot of the fiberglass. Unless you have an airspace there, there will be condensation down there, and we don't don't have an airspace. Uh, if you have a gable roof, which is slanted like that. Typically, they put a, an airspace that kind of goes up a little air hole, like perforations at the top of the roof. Here, we don't have that. We've got a flat roof. So, for flat roofs, standard is you got to add more insulation to prevent the condensation from happening or to limit it. That's the idea there. But the rigid insulation means two inch extended expanded polystyrene, just the foam stuff. So everything good there? Yeah, so you're able to edit the sketches and that's good. Um, so you still have the sketches. So this is a file you want to upload again and then make a simple copy of it. Okay. So let's see where you are. And 
you paid attention to work on a X zero plane, a zero plane, which is true if you don't make any offsets by default, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, so you can double click on a sketch to edit it. So you get rid of your corner overlap. Mm -hmm. So that corner is good. And the So, so well, actually, let's mm -hmm. see those corners. The, the short side should overlap. All right. Short side should overlap the long. When you say overlap, you mean this should go to the end? What do you? What do you actually? What do you mean? Yeah. If I say short side overlaps the long, that means they're not the literally. Are they? Well. A confusing word. It's a, the short side. Let's see, which is your short and long side? I can't tell. Oh, so no, that is the. Uh, okay, so this so, is the short side. Okay, and so, so zoom in on that. So you, that's all good. Yeah, right? that's good. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's all good. And the right side there is also same pattern. Yeah, you're good on that. Save the file with the complete sketches. That's good. Um, now let's see. You made it in in as one thirty-two foot piece. Oh yeah, I guess that's not technically. Yeah, so that that we want to split into two, but maybe for the purpose of right now, maybe we can uh, just let's just go into the merge part. You can fix that. So just save this and then come back to this. I want to see what happens when you merge this into the other just to show that uh, we can integrate the two files in a separ in separate documents. So because we have defined where we're working it can all make sense because we know how to align everything. So make a simple copy of this, and because um, you have to make a, in order to move things around when you're joining things, you have to make a copy somewhere. So you might as well make a simple copy. We know you still have to fix fix the individual pieces, but just do this for purpose of orienting upon a merge. And remind me how to make a simple copy. What am I deleting? So what you do is go into Part Workbench. How do you make a simple copy? Do we have that documented? No. Uh, do I do we have one simple copy? Nope. So let's add that one. How do you make a simple copy?
I forgot to see what the future on that. Put this, put this in the future. Sorry. You're kind of cutting out there. Can you say it again? In the when when uh, when we flip the future into, into two or something, what would the easiest way be to do that? Is there an easy way to just actually split it into two pieces, or would I have to make it? No, uh, there's. No, if you want to keep the pieces atomically as in the part tree, you just have to do a sketch for each one. For the purpose of parts count, which which we do keep in a full file, yeah, you just draw them up as individual objects, otherwise there's no way to account for it. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so, well, actually, okay, so you, you want to make a simple copy, but you want to make a compound first. So let's walk through that. Take all your objects so you can, like, fold, fold it up so you don't see the sketches, but, or just select everything. Uh, select everything in there and then in part make make simple copy through the part menu all right yeah so you saved this you already uploaded this stuff so you've got a backup copy make simple because right now if you work in the same file you're gonna overwrite what you have so um, so it's okay that I, I am using the same file but I uploaded the previous version so I could always download that right yeah that's a safe way to <clears throat> to to back up as long as you you uploaded the correct file. Should I save this as something else? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so save as working copy. Yeah. And what I do is like I you know first thing I do is I upload to the wiki, and I still save working copies in case I missed uploading properly or select the wrong file or something. Um, Okay, so, so in part, make compound, go down, no, keep going down, make compound, and collapses into a compound, now make simple copy of that compound, see it's all got all this info in there, <clears throat> create simple copy, now at this point, um, that compound simple copy yeah that's that's what you need so if you save this as a simple copy you can just so name it name it properly and then go from there name this properly? yeah name it so you know what that is like because you're gonna work with it in the overall assembly so it's good to keep track of parts So next step was trying to integrate that with rest. He had to take a phone call. He stepped outside.
Yeah. Uh, so escape out of that. Click so, escape. Yeah. You got the the selection where it allows you to rotate and things. Yeah, escape out of that. So you got the simple compound. Simple copy of it. That's right, that's the easiest it. thing to work with. So you're not getting confused by like rotating sketches or like crashing because there's too much TMI for the computer. Uh, so yeah, simple co simple copies work well to now once you start assembling things together. Okay, so take that one. That's erase the compound or just start a new file. Just get rid of that. It'll spit out all the contents. So that's what you'll see. Erase all of that. Just spit out all. Of It'll spit out what's in there and erase that. Okay, so you got insulation box. Yeah, sure. That's what you want to save. So save this and then that's what you want to merge into the... Yeah, so this, this file is what you want to merge. So take Prince's file and merge it or into this document or go into his file and... Yeah, take his file and merge it into your doc. Now, for Prince's file, the, the thing should also be that we make a simple copy of that. As you're doing this, yeah. Um, Should I do that? Yeah, maybe maybe let the next person do this. So you you got yeah. to this step here. So maybe next person who wants to try to integrate. Now let's let's look at how we integrate the two files. So who wants to do that? I'll upload my. So maybe just upload. If you upload this one, uh, we can keep it in the part history. Just note note that it's this is the simple copy, <coughs> in fact, an incorrect simple copy. Uh, but we'll just <coughs> delete that later. Um, yeah. But it's good good for this exercise right now. Who wants to take over from there and see how the two files merge? Okay, so download Matt's and download Prince's. Um, and see what we have there. Share screen. So the uh, second story of roof and the box. The, yeah, the blocking. Uh, do the blocking since we we liked it. Except prints, you, you want to fix that one side which is 6.25 um, on both sides. That spacing's got to be the same. So unmute yourself, Joshua. Got this download, Prince's. Uh, mm -hmm. So the idea is, even though, like, say there's a mistake, like, how how does this merge workflow work? If you still have a mistake, there's many people working on it. Well, as long as we're working in an understandable plane where we still have access to all the sketches and all the underlying info, you can fix those kinds of things easily. Once you start moving things around, then when you fix something, you're going to have to redo the position. The position. So you have to so pay attention to a little bit to where are you doing the corrections and the corrections should always be done in a in a source file for the for the process to work well uh, so to keep everything clean now if the source files are good then we can either move things manually or use the more advanced features of 19 which are assemblies both will work So it's on a CAD and it's under roof. 
so sh2cad and in the index if you go to sh2cad there's an index and the index says seed home 2 part library 2 2.8 2 And in the roof, since the part library is supposed to atomize things to show the parts, because the roof was our assembly, we still want the individual part. So, prints, for example, you sh you'd want to take out just your blocking, put it into a separate file, and uh, uh, do that as a separate file so that when somebody wants to work just on the blocking, they can do that still without because right now we, we by looking at this you can't tell where the blocking would be and you do want to split things into individual parts as much as possible So there you have, let's see, this is Matt's file. Installation box. There's two of them. There's the 0 0.5 and the, this one. That element. I just looked in the other section. So there's the riser, the installation box, and there's this one. Um, 0 0.5 inch. Oh, I see. So roof insulation. Let's see. Here. I see. Yeah, those both parts, both of those parts, you need to okay. download. Now, both of those should also be simp made into simple copies. But for now, yeah. So if you just merge them for now. Okay. So start with a merge. Because we wanted to merge Prince's blocking into it and see how that works. So can we actually understand how parts go together? Are we keeping in track, keeping track of coordinates in practice? Okay, so they're like way above each other. Well, I'm moving one away because I this one's has all oh, the details and then this one's the simple object. So I, I have to try to figure out. Which parts I'm going to merge. So Let's see. So were they overlapping not in the correct position? So, they, so they were overlapped. Yeah, they were. This is how it was initially. Zoom in. So they're both like right over each other. Right. So yeah, oh, I see. I see. Um, right. So when we save the, yeah, I see. So the question is here, okay, how do we, we're trying to keep this one together since that's really like the one part, but yeah, ideally you, you separate the, the half inch from the three and a half inch. Um, so maybe uh, separate them a little bit and then make a simple copy. Mm-hmm. And then move them apart so they're actually correct. It's probably best done through the XYZ positioning, right? So, because if they were the same, all you gotta do is change one number. And change the Z, I guess, right? Well, they're right on top of each other, so you only need to go point half of an inch, half an inch. This is assembly as they're right on top of each other. Okay. So 
Okay, there you go. So the idea here was, okay, merge the blocking, see where we end up. What we're trying to do simply is see like, okay, when we work in individual files, are we getting crazy results or is it actually working that we can negotiate that and then, so so merge merge Prince's blocking. And that was in another file. Yeah. And we asked, um, yeah. So it's right on top. Yeah, so I mean what we're seeing is yeah, we're all in the same coordinate system. Um, yeah. And there we were just trying to separate the blocking from this because uh, the roofing, the structure there is not good for the roof. That's That needs to be changed from 2x6 two to 2x12s. Two um, but yeah, that's the basic idea there. Um, We've observed what do we see here? We observed that we're all at the same plane. We, we can interoperate files because we all started the X Y zero plane, and uh, they're kind of lining up right now. So that's good. Now, in practice, where is that blocking going to be compared to what you have here? Just just as a last question, maybe. So where is this blocking actually compared to the the real um, roof box? roof insulation box in real life we had it it's going to be right below right because that's where the, the roof box the insulation box sits right on top of the the big roof structure so these would actually be um, I guess to keep things clean like the I guess the blocking from Prince's file would sit on a zero, and because the insulation box is above it, move it above. Okay, so as opposed to moving the blocking down into negative, just keeping things more clear. So these two need to be merged and on top of the blocking, basically. Yeah, the right, right. The the roof box, insulation box, needs to be on top of the blocking. That's where it would be in real life. Okay. Because the blocking belongs to. The large loop roof structure. Okay, but then these yeah. two are that like the 0 0.5 and the box itself, like the two parts that I've highlighted, are one piece, right? Just one um, one set half an inch above the other. Yeah, actually, yeah. it'll be useful to keep that in one piece since that's like one one assembly. And in practice, yeah, like we keep that together because and we'll build it in a workshop for the purpose of documentation and, and like assembly order. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can put them together. Well, then just you can just change it if it's one part. Then just change its coordinate by eleven point two five, and you should be at the at the right height, right? Or maybe not because those those blockings are ten inches. So, um, but that's that's still good. Um, so, yeah. How long did we make the blocking? We made it ten. Uh, that's eleven. Eleven point two five. What is it like? What is uh? I guess we made it 10. But yeah, 11.25 uh, is more technically correct. Um, should probably keep it to, to 11. I just keep it, uh, keep things uniform. It would be like more equal to the 11.25 of the big roof box. But we just said 10, okay, because we don't need all 11. It's 
it's fine if it's if it's ten. For the purpose of CAD, it will confuse you because it no longer tells you that it's that that's the exact top of the the roof box. So maybe in a CAD we should we should keep it at 11.25. When we actually build it, like a lot of times you the as built can differ from CAD for for various purposes. Like it doesn't matter. Like 10 inches doesn't matter here versus 11.25. In fact, you want to go below 11.25 because if you cut it too much, it's going to be sticking out into the next layer, and that wouldn't be good because you can't put the ceiling on in that case, uh, stuff like that. So, so as built in practice can sometimes be a little different than a CAD. Like when you're building, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. I just had this on hand. Okay, do it. Uh, I think that's acceptable. Um, but what I'm guessing in a CAD here, like, like I guess learning. Is we should probably keep the the blocking in the CAD to to 11.25 because it will help everybody build within the CAD as opposed to getting confused at and remembering that oh that's actually 11.25 um, because that's exactly what what the roof box depth uh, well the the main main structure of the roof is it's 11.25 so anyway no that's cool uh, so the point was we we merge all the individual files including the sheeting. At the end, oh, we got to put in the insulation. We should. Um, that's more like a, almost like a busy task. But the non-busy task part of the rigid foam insulation is there's a particular order and pattern to it, so that we don't overlap seams, and that's that is useful to get into CAD. That's what we were working on before. Um, that's, uh, but that's yeah, that's that's the exercise. We got to fix a couple of things here, like. Um, the few details we talked about, like the spacing, that's 6.25. Uh, Wes has got to correct that to 11.25 and other things. Um, so once those things in, we can merge that all. Well, rotate all those five parts as one okay. in now a final assembly a file. This, but then I'm making a compound with the 10 inch rather than the 11.25. So that's five for now. Yeah, uh, and in fact, like, okay, so say we're bottling, bottlenecking, like, because we're waiting for five people to put in the roof. It's also okay for the, you know, like, five people would would rot do the rotation separately. So it's kind of like, yeah, one rotation is simpler. But if we're just waiting for those parts and maybe like a person took a sick leave or whatever, that's a bottleneck. So um, it also would make a lot of sense to, okay, we'll just rotate it and put it into the correct position within the final CAD. That's acceptable. But I have to be very, very careful. And you might want to note, I rotated it 1.03 degrees, whatever that number is, to make it good. So then the other people can also rotate it 1.03 because if they rotate 1.04, it might be a little off. However, each person should be able to, to rotate properly, given that you know exactly that it's going to rise 4 inches. So, uh, one way to do this is just rotate it anyway. And uh, put it into place. We can do that. So we're not wait, bottlenecking the whole process in parallel. This kind of parallel process. Uh, so it. So if we, in our ample spare time, as we wait for other people, we can do that. Those kinds of tasks. Um, so we can move on to something else. So if we have time, time to do that because we finished, it's, it does still make sense. So does this, does this make sense or? How would we want to do that? Um, I think to keep it keep it clean and atomic, as in individual pieces coming together as they're ready. Yeah, I think the person would would have to rotate it. It's not a big deal. It's just a rotation operation. You just if you keep track of the data, which is okay, the angle is such and such. Then it's easy for the next person to do that without doing guesswork. So actually, in fact, the first person 
because when you rotate it first, you have to do a little bit of finagling to say, okay, did I rotate it exactly so it rose four inches? You have to kind of examine it back and forth. You're actually finding the rotation angle. But once you find that, it's actually very easy for the next person to rotate it by the same. In which case, there is a case for the first person to finish, actually do that rotation and find out the data, find the data, find the angle. And then that, that angle could be used by all the other people to rotate rapidly into place. Just so you know where exactly how much you're rotating. So, and that way you can, we can have everybody else put in the, uh, put in the final design in, into the model. And how do you know how much to rise each each section? Well, maybe let's just go through that real quick, like <clears throat> in the model. So you got the roof structure. <clears throat> well, in the final assembly, that's going to go above the roof riser. So as the roof riser can be put in definitely into the final CAD. And then uh, even at the, you can do the rotation in the X, in the, in the zero plane there and then move the rotated thing into place so uh, so let's do that but how do you know so you gotta uh, if you rotate it well you gotta know the angle that's one so the first person to find out the angle we should make that note um, how do we communicate that where where is an transparent place to put it like maybe like under the roof section note the roof has been rotated by X degrees like right under the, the as a note like right under the roof section in a CAD and then when as people finish up their roof modules they can say oh, okay now I got to rotate it X and then just move it into position so it's so it's the same as before where you're moving this into position or aligning it as needed with the extra step of a rotation step so it's not too confusing it's still quite tractable because you know I'm thinking okay well if if this design is more complex say more people are working on it um, does this process scale yeah I mean once we find the angle we're good we just keep that use that throughout and, and that's an easy answer in order to put everything into place so like how do you put like say say nobody you know Ken did the roof OSB and he was the first one to get done. Uh, how do you know where to put it? Well, rotate it in a zero plane, so you get exactly the four inch rise, and then that's save that, and then move that into position. And uh, can we calculate how far up? Like, if you wanted to save just the roof positionally correct, like. If you didn't, well, you gotta compare it to the the house file, but you can also say in a house file, um, we already defined positions for the second story floor, like the base of the wall modules. How far above that? Well, you can just keep adding. There's the second story walls, top plate, 1.5 inch, roof riser, 4 inch, roof structure and blocking, 11.25 insulation box four original insulation is inside the insulation box so then and then you've got the OSB so if you don't have anything above the second story walls because let's see in, in our CAD we just have up to up to what um, in the house assembly master we are up to do we have the second story top plate? Yes, indeed. So now, where's your OSB going? How many inches above that? You want me to open the file or press it on? Oh, I'm just asking. Uh, I was asking Ken, because you got your OSB. Like, well, you don't have the roof on it even, but can you put your OSB into place? Uh, so what's the number there? We got the, in a final CAD, um, I'll share, share my screen. All right, so in a, yeah, because this is okay. We're working in parallel. Like pieces are coming in as they as they are ready. 
so you got the top plate in a, in a final assembly there, right? How far above the top plate are you going to put your rotated plywood? What's the answer to that one? So you put in your plywood floating in midair. So there's two things under the plywood that contribute to height. What are those two things up above the top plate? This is for any top plate, right? Not just the top plate for the second one. Like the first one has the top plate and the plywood as well. Yeah, except now the plywood yeah, it's sim it's quite similar, but it's a little different because we've got more pieces there. We've got the roof structure and the insulation box. So how much does that add up to? Eleven point two five. It's two by twelves. Four inch. Fifteen point two five. So, you put it 15.25 on the lower edge, that's exactly where the lower edge is because one side of the box is, n is at the same place, the other side is tilted up. Yeah. So now with that information you can, without the other people having done their part, you can locate your plywood exactly. Because once again we're dealing with very simple boxes in our overall build system. So you, you do know exactly where it is. And therefore, this process can can happen in parallel. It's just a bunch of layers, one after another. So that's that's the point. And then other people too, given that we know the roof angle, which somebody has to find out, and we, I, I can maybe I'll do that. I'll do the angle positioner. I'll work on that, so I'll, I'll draw me a line. Well, we I think we already have that in the other pile, so I'll just pick it out from the other one and get the angle. Let's see if I can pull out the angle from one of the other files. detail Start a new file because, yeah, I'll just get that angle.
two degrees. Is it a 192 inch mm -hmm. run and a 3.5 inch rise? Four, four inch rise. Four inch rise. Yeah. So with a 4.02 rise we get 1.2 degrees. Let's just use 1.2 so it's simple. So what I did, how do you create it? That's what Joshua just did, which is two by four and a half inch plywood. The riser part. Two by four, two by four. Yeah. and a half inch plywood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, four. Two by four is three point five. Yeah, One half, half inch plywood. Ha oh, half, inch. half inch plywood, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
for root, root structure. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to rely on the first two parts. Yeah. Okay, so who can, uh, with what we said now, rotate? Does somebody have a final, their finished thing, like for example, plywood or anything that's ready to be put on? Does someone have, or people are still working on their. I'm still working. Uh, I have to Simple copy? Uh, yeah. yeah.
tire for now. Let's take a look at Ken's uh, simple copy of compound and how we rotate that into place and put it positionally correct. Mm -hmm. So the final exercise, can we do that actually within the file that we started with? So uh, I'm gonna still sharing my screen, so I'm gonna open that one up. Mm -hmm. So say that's it. How do we know wh where it is? It's x, y, z equals zero. Uh, that's what it looks like. So it should be right on, on your, your base plane. We wanna t twist it 1.2. 1.2 degrees so I'm going to just go into draft now which direction do we how do we know so let's look at one two I want to look at it from this side yes and I think if I flip it counterclockwise that's going to be the right angle so let's do it I'm going to go View, rotate, and then grab it. Well, just grab it like this. Oh, I see. So it, yeah, yeah, it moves it around. I gotta grab it exactly where I need to grab it. So I'm gonna need to grab it exactly on this corner. So I'm gonna go rotate. raises it up there so I don't like that but I'll do it anyway so I'm gonna do it 1.2 it's a slight angle but I'm gonna move it back down since I've kind of moved it where I didn't like it well actually in a position here I'll just move it to y z equals 0 there and then y what happens if I put it to 0 yeah that's good keep it all at 0 so this is this is the correct thing. I'm gonna save this now. Well, Control S. But I also want to move it up to where I know it's gonna be good. And uh, I'm just gonna do it right here. I remember 121.1, 121. Let's see if we can just add that all up in the calculator. I'm just gonna open up calculator. I'm gonna do 121.125. That's the for the second story walls. I'm going to add 95 plus 6 to 5 for the height of the second story wall. I'm going to add 1.5 for the top plate. I'm going to add 11.25. I'm going to add 4. Right? So that should be my Z height. 233.5 so let's see if that worked 233.5 so there it is that should be a that should be my and the origin you can see it's there so maybe that worked let's see I think it's gonna work because X I, I could see yeah that's X Y zero origin bottom left hand corner and I just put it way on top after twisting so let's save this and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna merge that with the with the house master and did it work so I'm doing this I'm gonna go file merge bam so it worked there it is oh wait Yeah, that worked. Uh, this is the front, of the house. front of the house is this one. It's a double door and windows. Yeah, and then it should be, should be back. back? Yeah. No, because we're going to add another addition to it in the back. So we want the sloping to be away from the future addition. Why do you want it sloping back? I don't know. Just, Just like, like that? I see. Away. Yeah, the disadvantage of sloping to the front is that you're going to get water to the front but that's your gutter you have to have a gutter anyway uh, that's the inconvenient part you're right because in real life this drainage is actually towards the back 
So that's not convenient, but if we're going to add a house to the back of this, we need to do that. We're going to add another thousand square feet because we pre-framed the uh, addition doors. So the idea there is to show how expandable. See those pre-framed doors there? We're building this for a thousand square foot addition on the back to demonstrate that this works well. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make that transparent. Well, I should make it transparent in the source so that when you put this in here, we can do that. upload this to the OSB as a final position the correct file. Yeah, if you actually um, keep track of the numbers, they all add up, and it's a simple box, so we should be able to keep track of all the numbers. So do a similar process for uh, all the other ones.
Mm -hmm. Like you said, just simple copy and then another copy without the joist and the blocking, or was it just without the blocking? So, uh, or was it like just the frame? For you, that was you're just gonna do the blocking, so you wanna upload just that. Okay, so just because the Wes is doing the, he's doing a whole structure. Got it. Yeah, just blocking. so compound and then simple copy. Okay. And then the first file that you upload is just your blocking, blocking with all the details as much as you have it. So we gotta look at file management because it's getting over one meg. So I'm gonna break it into first floor and second floor now. Um,
merchant can then yep. merge the second floor into the master file. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I can. It's too. Right now, it's getting too big, so I'm splitting it into first floor and second floor because it's getting to one meg. Um, so let me do. A, so hold on to that for a sec. Sure. Right here. 